This video will help you understand what domain and range are and how to find them from a graph, table of values, an equation, or a word description. Remember that domain refers to the input values which we usually assign to the x variable. Range refers to the output values and usually get assigned to the y variable. Let's first take a look at the domain and range from a graph. This first graph shows a linear function. Notice that the line continues on in both directions. For the domain, look along the x-axis. Each point on the x-axis matches up with a point on the line. That means that the domain is equal to all real numbers. In interval notation, we write this as the interval negative infinity to infinity. Now for the range, look along the y-axis. Each point on the y-axis also matches up with a point on the line. Even these points up here have a matching point on the line. All you have to do is picture the line continuing to rise and it will match up with all values on the y-axis. That means the range is also all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity. Now look at this graph. This is an exponential function. Notice that on the right side, it will keep getting higher and higher. On the left side, however, it looks like the graph levels out. Let's see how that affects the domain and range. Again, for the domain, look along the x-axis. Since the curve will keep going on both the left and right sides, there is a point on the curve for every point on the x-axis. The domain is all real numbers, or negative infinity to infinity. For the range, look along the y-axis. Although the graph keeps going up for some y values, there are some y values that have no matching point on the curve. The curve never gets to the negative 2 or lower. That means that the range is anything above negative 2. In interval notation, it looks like negative 2 to infinity. Next is looking at domain and range from a table of values. From a table, the domain is just listing the x values for the domain and the y values for the range. You can list them in order that they appear, or you can list them in numerical order. Just remember to get all of the numbers listed. To get the domain and range from an equation, it's important to know if you're looking at a linear or exponential equation. The easiest way to remember which is which is that an exponential has a variable in the exponent and a linear has no exponents. For this first one, there are no exponents, so the equation is linear. For the domain, think about what kind of numbers you can put in for x. You can actually put any number you want in for x. That means the domain is all real numbers. For the range, it's a little more difficult to think what kind of numbers come out after you put in your x values, so I think about the graph. Since this is linear, the line will extend forever both up and down. That means the range is also all real numbers. The next equation has an exponent and the exponent is a variable. That means the equation is exponential and the graph will curve. Think about the kind of numbers you can substitute for x to figure out the domain. Again, there are no limitations on x here. I can put any number I want as an exponent. That means the domain is all real numbers. There are two ways you can think about the range. First, picture what an exponential curve looks like. It always appears to level off, so there will be a point in the range that the graph won't go under. Now look again at the equation. An exponential all by itself can never be zero or less. Since the equation has the exponential and then a minus nine, that means the exponential will appear to level off at a negative nine. It won't go any lower. That means the range is anything above negative nine or negative nine to infinity. Last is looking at word descriptions. For these, consider if your values can be negative or not. Also think about if decimals or fractions make sense or if you're only dealing with whole numbers. The first one is about renting a bike. Visitors to a city park can rent bicycles for a $4 deposit. Then it costs $2 per hour that the bike is out in the park. The domain in this first problem would be the number of hours the bike is rented for. Can you rent a bike for a negative number of hours? No, so the domain starts at zero. How high can it go? Realistically, there would be a limit on how many hours you could rent the bike for, but since the problem doesn't mention that, we'll say the domain can be anything from zero hours and up. Also, consider if decimals would make sense for the domain. Can you rent the bike for just a half hour? You probably could, but the company would probably still charge you for a full hour. 
So in this case, only whole numbers make sense, no decimals or fractions. Now think about the range. That would be the cost of renting the bike. Do negative numbers make sense here? No, you wouldn't pay a negative amount of money. Also, can you pay nothing? Again, no, the minimum payment is the $4 deposit. So the range would be anything from $4 and up. Would there be decimals here? Money is okay to have decimals, but in this situation, the amount is going up by $2 each hour, so there will be no decimals in the money amount. One more example. You invested $6,500 in the stock of your favorite company in 2005. Then the economy became unstable. Your investment has been losing money at a rate of 3% per year. The domain here would be the number of years you leave your money in the stock. Only positive numbers make sense here since time doesn't go into the negatives. So the domain is anything from zero and up. Decimals and fractions do make sense for the domain since you could figure out the middle in the middle of a year how much your money stock how much money your stock was worth. The range will be how much money your stock is worth. You're losing money on the stock, so it won't ever be higher than, six, than the $6,500 you started at. It also won't ever go any lower than $0. You have lost all of your money. The range is then between zero and $6,500. Decimals make sense here because you're losing a percentage and not a constant rate of change. So it is possible to have decimals for your money amounts. I hope this helps and good luck on finding domain and range on your assignment.